Welcome back to Passion About Music Education, a channel dedicated to music educators like you and me. My name is Rachel Hardman and today I'm going to talk about how to plan your concert. There are two aspects to putting on a musical concert, whether it's an informal concert, whether it's a piano recital, whether it's one of the big concerts of the whole school year. The first is the music element. What groups are playing, what soloists are playing, what program of music are you doing? The creative aspect, probably the most important part, what you are doing with your students musically. The second element of your concert that you always must consider is the logistics. How does your concert get delivered? How are you presenting it? And all the elements that go into doing basically event management. So really in this video I'm going to talk about the event management aspect because I know you have the creative element down because that's the bit that you're most passionate about. Showcasing your students, playing all the music and creating beautiful music and sounds. The logistical aspect is really very much an event management project for you to consider and once you start to understand this you can take the stress element out of putting on your big full scale concerts because if you're planning from the event backwards in time, so you've got your calendar date, so most of us will have a concert somewhere in the middle of December, and it's how do we logistically plan for that so it's effective and smoothly run? Because without a doubt, when you get to the point of doing your concert, some curveball will happen. One of your students will hurt their leg skiing. One of your students, parents have got to take them out of state and they're not going to be here for the concert. Somebody breaks an instrument, whatever it is that turns up on the day, you will already be stressed working on delivering that creative element of the concert and ensuring that it is ready for being presented to an audience. So by limiting the stress from the logistics side too will allow you to have uh, more control of the event and also be able to you know, not burn yourself out because it's really easy to do that. It's really easy to be very stressed on concerts or musicals or whatever, you know, big scale work that you're doing. And what happens is other colleagues, particularly if you're in a school environment, have no concept of the fact that you are doing two different skills at the same time. The creative element, the sort of student management aspect of the performance and musicality as well as logistics so they just see you as being very grumpy which you are because you're worn out because you're probably doing too much because there's never enough time there's never enough music teachers and never enough help and do you know what you shouldn't apologize for that if you're tired and stressed out on those concerts because you're overworked that is a fault of the admin of your school for not stepping up and helping and creating ways of supporting your needs in this video i really want to give you some tips to help you really think about the logistic aspect of the concert, to try and help you have less stress on the concert, to be able to enjoy the concert more, to be able to be in the moment with the students and celebrate that rather than worrying about all the other aspects. So step one is really to sit down and brainstorm. Brainstorm every element of your concert from the beginning stages to the pack up and being finished. Think about in terms of stage management, lighting, sound, whether you're having a video camera, how are you marketing it, are you doing tickets, do you have refreshments, do you need to send out media work, posters, ticket design, really break down every aspect and I've done this myself and you have a spreadsheet or you know you might want to do it as a word document, whichever works for you, really go for every aspect because you'll suddenly miss something that the next time you do a concert you go, oh, I forgot about, I actually needed somebody to take professional pictures and I forgot to block that in. So you need to think of it, everything, brainstorm every aspect and then what you need to do is think about how that looks in terms of on the day. What can be done prior to the day? What needs to happen on the day of the concert and what will need to happen after the concert? So obviously the packing up, dropping set, putting the chairs away, making sure all the folders are back here, music is returned. And if you're like most of us, you're actually doing performance work in a separate venue to where you rehearse, it's the logistics of getting everything back. 
Once you've done that, you'll be able to see all the different tasks you need to do for a successful concert. Once you have done all of the logistic brainstorming, you can then calendar all the different events. So for instance, if you are doing a concert at the beginning of December, by the beginning of November, you will have done your marketing, your poster design, your ticket design, and your letter out to parents telling them when the concert is. You will have put together the rehearsal schedule, which you'll have shared with staff. You will have put together um, the dress code that you want, so parents have got time to go out and buy, you know, the black top and the black trousers, or whatever it is that you decide to have for your, you know, your event when they need to uh, attend, drop their student child off, and what time they need to pick it up, how long the concert's gonna be. There's all of that logistics. Some of it can be done in advance, and some of it can't be done till the last few days. And that's what you need to block out so that you can control the stress level. Because there's nothing worse than trying to sell tickets two days before the concert, as well as doing all the logistics, as well as communicating with parents, as well as rehearsing and actually dealing with any creative issues that come up on top of the logistic element. So make sure you then plan backwards what can be done in advance and when you're going to do it by, so that you know that that job is scheduled for that week and you have done it. It will reduce your stress. So tip three, once you have worked out the logistics for your concert, is then to work out who's responsible for every action. And if you find that your name is on everything, then you will be walking into a big pile of stress. And so you do need to, by doing the, the logistics in advance, work out who you can rely on. It may be that you can pass some of these jobs to other members of staff. You might be in a really supportive community where you have good colleagues who will step up and take over the sound and they'll take over the lighting. They'll do the refreshments for you. They'll do the program design and the photocopying and ticket sales. And if you're in that situation, that's fantastic. If you're not, which is more often than not in that situation, then this is where you start to rely on, you know, a couple of good colleagues and your very oldest music students who can help you out, who might well take over doing the sound and lighting for you. You may find that you have an amazing tutor group. I had a really amazing tutor group who just loved helping out with stage management. They were my team. They weren't music students. They weren't taking any you know, advanced top end high school music with me, but they loved being involved in the event management and they trained up everybody else. So every time like my oldest student would train up a younger student, teach them how to do it and as they graduated that student would then became the eldest and they trained so that takes time but it's really useful because they understand the concepts and they want to support their friends so that on the day they tend to be so reliable compared to maybe you know a member of staff who isn't quite as invested in your program as your students are in, invested in each other Another group of students you could pull on are your media and drama students, your photography students, if you're uh, taking pictures and you haven't got a professional photographer who can come in, um, or even your PE students who may be wanting to raise some money for you know, football equipment or whatever it is if you're not fundraising, and they may well come in and take over doing the whole refreshment aspect. There are people within the school who can take over those jobs and, and try to pass them off because you cannot do everything by yourself. This is where you do lean into burnout. And actually, it's very unfair for you to have to do everything by yourself in a school environment. We are a school and it's a community and we should all be working together. Of course, one of the aspects of this, and this is where you need to put it into your logistics, particularly if you're a new teacher or you're new to a school, is that you need to train people into taking over the role. So if you've got a um, team of, I don't know, sort of, a level, IB, AP students doing your sound engineering. They're gonna be in charge of the microphones. You probably need to teach them how to put the pack on properly and attach the headset, how to hold the microphone, how to test it, how to control the sound on the sound um, desk. You, you will need to do that bit of teaching because they obviously won't know how to do it. You will need to teach them how to fix it when things go wrong, when the microphone starts squitching because it's you know been turned up too far or it's near a speaker. 
Your students can do that, but you need to teach that. And that's where the logistic planning comes in place because you can't do that on the day because you're going to be too stressed on the creativity aspect of the concert, polishing it up and making sure that element works. Um, so plan that's into your logistic planning. What the time that you spend the first time will be consuming, but when you come back to do it in a year later or six months later, if you have the same students that you already have that knowledge, so it'll be less teaching. So that time you do the first time of commitment will be huge, but as you go forward, they will be training up other students, they'll be going away and learning things for themselves, and you won't have to do so much work. And my last tip for planning your logistic element of the concert is communication and education. If you're in a school environment, you must communicate in advance when you're going to have your rehearsal, when you're going to pull students out, when you're going to have the concert, that the students are going to be tired. Because the more you tell people and communicate and educate what's needed for that successful concert, the less pushback you're going to have. You're always going to have, in a, particularly in a high school environment, one teacher who won't let that student out for the rehearsal, who has suddenly got the most important test in the whole wide world. That really is up to the student, the teacher and the parent to have that discussion, not you. You can do the polite, well, you know, you've known from six weeks because I have communicated and this is a special event. You can then move your program rehearsal around if needs be, but there'll always be somebody and but if you communicate and educate your staff, your non-musical colleagues in advance, you will get less pushback and that's really important because they don't understand. They just think, to be honest, sometimes that we're just in the music room playing around and these concerts just happen and you know, you sit in the audience and go, oh, it wasn't that great. But they have no idea the work that you do, the effort that you have to put into the two elements of the concert, the logistics side and the creative performance element. So educate them because they don't know. And it's not their fault they don't know. You don't know everything about teaching business studies. How, why would they need to know anything about what you do? It is our job to educate our colleagues and the parents and the student body so that they understand what's happening because you are the music expert. It's your job to show show them what you're doing and what the students are doing and the hard work that you've all put in. To be do these big concerts, you've worked really hard. The kids have worked really hard. It doesn't just happen. So tell people that, educate them. Don't be afraid to do that because your colleagues will show more respect for the arts. They will show more respect for your program and you'll get less pushback. So if you're doing a concert this term, I hope this video has been helpful in thinking about some of the logistic aspects of putting your concert and that project management, event management. It is an event. You are managing an event and you are then managing the musical aspect. It's two massive jobs. A lot of people don't really understand is what you're doing. That's how we get into burnout and stress if we're not careful. We need to actually trust others to help us, get a team to help us, to take some of the non-essentials away from our work plate so we can focus on the really important part which is the showcasing your students. So what's your best tip in terms of managing logistics for your concert? I'd love you to share them with us, with our community, drop them in the comments and as always don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, turn on the notification so that you know when the latest videos are coming up and I will see you again here very soon on Passionate About Music Education.